there's this announcement that Meek Mill wants to drop his album on Cash App. You want to drop a Cash album? A Cash App album? That would actually be fire. Because he don't want to get paid a dollar <laughs> every 1,000 streams. Now, the math might not be exact, a dollar every 1,000 streams. However, the sentiment is very clear. He wants to get paid what he feels like he's worth and he feels like it's not worth the money if I'm getting paid very little for streams. And we're going to see this continue, mm-hmm. right? There's too many artists that... I'll say this. There's a lot of artists that existed before streaming popped, right? So they saw those numbers, right? Even Meek is like right before streaming went hard. Yeah, he remembers. He remembers, right? (laughs) He's old enough to remember. That's that gap, right? So when you have that memory, you're like, nah, it shouldn't look like this. (laughs) Granted, streaming has saved a lot in terms of a macro for music in some ways. It's a lot helped. It's been a part of the revenue growth in the music industry. However, I, 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 I could, I could, if I'm an established artist already, I'd be offended, right? If I saw those numbers, which is why all of them are acting like they're offended. Like all of them, like I ain't mess with that. Taylor Swift was like, oh, no, nah, I don't want my stuff to be on here. Well, Jay-Z was like, okay, I'm going to create my own platform so I can get m- more money from mine and some of these from, from, the, uh, from these other artists. Like no one who existed before is happy. Like our clients who were existing before, nobody. I've never known any artist who existed before streaming that was happy with the numbers and don't still talk about it to this day. Everybody who's just trying to get in the game or this is just what they're used to, you're either not worried about it because I'm not there enough to worry about it. You know, there's like it's your parents complain about stuff and it just is what it is. And then all of a sudden you got your own rent to pay and mm-hmm. you're like, dang. You got your own house and it's like, dang, that light bill did change relative to how much I had the lights <laughs> on. I could kind of <laughs> like maybe I should turn the lights off. That's why that's what I'll be thinking about now. I'm like, damn, I never said I wanted to turn the lights off. But now I gotta tell my my girl, I'm like, nah, turn that shit off, girl. Um <laughs> <laughs> so you got that. And then you got the people who this is all they know. Mm-hmm. And Spotify's been a uh, godsend for them because all I know is I wasn't making no money from this music. Now I'm making 5K a month from this music. 3K yeah, I'm, a month I'm making something. Music. I'm making something. <laughs> so it's hard for the newer artists to truly see it that way or be as aggressive about changing the game and, and some of these other routes. But, you know, you got the little Russells out there that are playing that game. But but I don't even think he's doing it just from a, what I see from a distance to be like, Anti Spotify is yeah. just like, hey, I gotta hustle and get my money in, in other ways. And how can I make this a part of my community and do it better? That's what it seems like from him. But like the, the, the newer artists don't really seem to have that same um, revenge approach to <laughs> to what Spotify yeah. and DSPs are doing. Because I think I think the smart artist is thinking about DSPs differently. Because you you brought up a great point, right? Like Taylor Swift left Spotify at one point. Jay Z left. Mm-hmm. A lot of major artists have left, but they all came back. Mm-hmm. They all came back, wow. and I think that's because it it can be argued that DSPs are probably the greatest music discovery tools to ever hit music consumership, right? Yeah, because it it truly has democratized the playing field. Like you could literally shoot off into a whole field of music that no one is necessarily like pushing you to 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 like. I guess I mean you could argue the algorithm, I guess, but. There's no there's no entity necessarily like pushing you to like like something right. It can it can it, there is a degree where it's dictated by consumer taste, what they like, what their friends are recommending, and things like that. So like I don't I've started to train myself to not even look at Spotify as necessarily like a viable monetization tool. It's like no, this is just a marketing tool. This is a way that that's what they want you to do, Jacoby. You're right. You're that's right. What they want you but that <laughs> it's working and they're winning. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? But and, and it, it's not the worst thing because it's like I it, it kind of makes me think of the TikTok model, right? Like we talked a lot about how there are TikTok creators who feel a type of way about the money they're being paid from TikTok. And I'm like, I can understand why TikTok is like, no, we're literally bringing you the audience in mass numbers with relatively Little to no work on your end compared to other social platforms. But like, yeah, there's work, but like compared to YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Getting 100,000 followers on TikTok compared to getting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's not the, it's not the, the same amount of work. So I could see TikTok going like, hey, man, like we're bringing you all this attention that's giving you the ability to monetize. Yeah, we're going to only give you 50%. You know what I'm saying? Like, so 
I kind of look at Spotify the same way. Where Spotify was like, hey, we're probably like, hey, we're the ones building the, algor- the algorithm that's introducing you to these new people. Like, right, like these new people would have never known you existed without our platform and our setup. Yep. So, yeah, we're going to not give you certain opportunities and not give you certain money because, yeah, you could argue that this is your IP that drives the platform. But for you guys who it's much harder to monetize for, the discovery could literally be life or death for you. Mm-hmm. So that's why you're not going anywhere else because as much as you hate this shit, there isn't really too many platforms or tools that compete with us in terms of discovery. TikTok has gotten – TikTok is probably the closest non-DSP app, you know what I'm saying, to, to being – um something heavy like that. But I just think like artists just need to kind of fold and look at it that way, bro. It's like, yeah, like it should almost be like your streaming money is just a part of like your break even, your break even funnel, right? Whatever your growth funnel looks like for yourself, this ad set up, this influencer set up, your DSP money should be like, hey, I spent five thousand dollars. I made back, you know, four thousand dollars in streaming revenue. You know what I'm saying? To they help me get enough people that I now go to try to sell 30K in merch. You know what I'm saying, too. And that's yeah. where my, my real money is going to come from. See, I think the thing about that is it's not just the discoverability. Because that's the new age tech version of, hey, bro, it's going to be a good look. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's all they're saying. And you know how people feel about that. After yeah. a while. I was like, bro, come on now. like <laughs> I need some substance. So you giving me good looks to avoid really giving me what I'm worth. Now, the new artist, again, you're looking for some kind of look. The older artist, I think the leverage that the platform has for them isn't necessarily the good look because they already have those good looks. They already have that leverage. It's about survival, mm-hmm. right? At some point, you're losing your audience's attention and you have to be where they are. Yeah. That's where they are listening to music. And as much as you would like to say, hey, I could just bring all these folks over here and now they can blast my Taylor Swift and my Beyonce on this separate in this separate space. We know that many people aren't going to do that. Yeah. They yeah. already got your behavior. That's how they win. That's why these tech platforms scale so quickly. It's like, yo, we want to get big enough where there's the network effect and we have such a large audience that they aren't going to want to go anywhere else. Right. Because I can listen to X, Y, Z here. And if they go to the Beyonce app, all they can listen to is Beyonce. As much as they love Beyonce, everybody also want to listen to somebody else too. Nobody's just a fan of one person. Yeah. So yeah. you start losing that uh, advantage of what's one of the marketing elements, placement, right? Being placed in the right position. So that's why the tech platforms have been so good at not only doing it to individual artists, but doing it to the labels. The labels be like, ah, oh, dang, man. All right, we, we got the IP, fortunately, so we can prevent you from doing it to a certain extent and figure out how we participate. All right, that's their leverage. Like They're like, we got the IP. If anything, if all else fails, we got IP. The tech platforms, though, they because they, they can't, like the labels can't compete in terms of attention. And understanding that, tech platforms, like, hey, as long as we get the people, we get the eyes, they're going to have to negotiate for, mm-hmm. with us for their IP because you can't just build another one of these. Like, how many of these social media platforms have not hit the threshold where there's enough people on there and people care for long enough? It's hard to do that. Yeah. All right. So they know, hey, you can't just do me overnight, man. Like, so go ahead, figure out. <laughs> like, what that deal is going to be. And that's why they violate so much, too. Yeah. Like, how many times are you, is, oh, man, TikTok owes this money, amount of money to the record labels. And TikTok's like, nah, we don't want anything yet, but we'll make a deal at some point. It'll be like a year later, still haven't made a deal because they know. And, they, and all the time, they're just growing and growing and growing, yeah. impact growing, yeah. knowing that they're getting more and more leverage throughout the, the, um, the way. That's why I've been saying for years, it's just like tech is in a space where they're finally going to be the ones who take the labels down. It's not going to be, you know, artists. It's just going to be a tech platform. And this is before TikTok. It seems like it's going to be TikTok outside of like, you know, America kicking it out. Like, Cause they, I don't know if you're familiar. They're bringing those, those conversations back by the way. No. Nah. Oh yeah. 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 Like, especially if a Republican gets in office, yeah. they're, they're a lot of them are pretty um, big on that as far as the politician side. But, but yeah, like TikTok, is seeming to be that one. If it's not them, it's going to come. They're, they're just showing you what's 
possible through a tech platform. We control the awareness. We control the artists from ground zero, pretty much. Have all their content on our platform, blow them up, have a distribution platform that they can now get on. We participate in that. We know, we know we got our puppet stuff going in the background where we can boost the followers. Yes, that's a thing on TikTok, right? And and, and get them more views, but legitimately yeah. advertising data. We got all of it here, bruh. Like we got it here. So Damn. let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you. And it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. <laughs> now, you just said something I didn't think about. Like, right. The same way the labels have the music catalog, the stream, the, the, well, the social platforms have their content catalog. I never thought about it that way before. Hell yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Which, actually, think about the content catalog, something that we didn't. Um, weren't aware of y'all should be aware of shout out to damien oh, yeah. ritter yeah. almost said lillard but <laughs> you know we were in, in la and we had that conversation with him and he was telling us how people are buying youtube content catalogs and the same way people can buy your catalog on um you know for spotify music well not spotify music for your music catalog same way people can buy that because there's a value to it there's people who are out here buying your YouTube catalog because it's content. It can be monetized. We know that your YouTube content continues to be monetized. You have old content that's getting advertising, but also YouTube videos, the length. There's all these platforms that are popping up that are actually looking for content on their mm -hmm. platforms. I don't know if you've seen like there's something on my TV called Freebie. There's yeah. like Tubi. Yeah. They're all looking for some type of content. Yeah. It's always a B. It's, it's always, bro. Always. <laughs> As a matter of fact, over Thanksgiving, with my family, all the kids were around, there was, one, through one of those channels, it was basically a YouTube channel, but it wasn't YouTube. I, I don't want to say a YouTube channel, but it wasn't YouTube. It wasn't YouTube, but they were showing a show that pretty much was a YouTube show. It was these kids running around the house, and they had all these skits going on. It was some brother and sister, and maybe like two of their friends or something. And it was just showing on regular TV through one of those channels. And I can imagine, because I can tell, I know a YouTube video when I see it. Yeah. It's like, it probably got licensed, right? So that whole catalog situation makes sense that they're purchasing that. But it goes back to the idea that everything you're creating now can be monetized. There's different ways, right? But it's beyond just how much do I make from the advertising on my video. And I think artists start to start um, realizing that, like, get creative with what you what you actually build because if it's desirable even if even if it's not getting a lot of views on youtube or something or tiktok or whatever there's the opportunity to license to these other spaces and places yeah or figure out your own monetization op around it like what like an in-house setup like what me miller talking about doing right like I, oh yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah like i mean he's he's essentially asking for like patreon and band count models without the patreon you know what i'm saying band account <laughs> yeah. platform yeah um so it's like you know it's th there's always an option so i think take the risk and just see which i do think is something that every artist at, especially at his level should do at least once in their careers like just do a temperature check bro like see where your audience is at without all of the label set up right like see what you can get away with i'm gonna put together this unique merch experience or this unique product experience or show experience whatever just to just to have an understanding of where you are in the marketplace because yeah. if you go like man i got twenty thousand active motherfuckers that's ready to buy some stuff you know what i'm saying that changes the game versus like you know you learn like hey i only got a thousand like man i gotta you know maybe i do need to get into fan building mode right or like i said you see hey i got fifty thousand Shit, fuck all that dropping new music. I might just need to take the next year to figure out how to get these 50,000 people to spend some money on me. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, and put something together that gets them excited about that. So I do think every artist 
especially of his caliber who is recently going indie or like attempting to tackle the indie model needs to do like a temperature check. See, let's talk about that. The different ways to monetize and just some of the history of mm. like the monetization, fan base capturing, because you talk about Meek Mill doing the Cash App thing 10 years before, roughly speaking. That's kind of similar to the Jay-Z Samsung deal. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Magna Carta, Holy Grail. And it was launched on there exclusively for a period of time, something like that. Yeah. All right? All of these platforms are always looking for some type of marketing advantage or promotion to do. So, like you said, it doesn't have to be through the traditional content on social media. If I could just figure out who do I need to partner with, if I'm a big artist, you should take that risk because there's going to be somebody who says, hey, we're trying to bring attention to our tech platform. You do the deal, especially, you know, if it's a super risk and it's new, you're not trying to um, make make it exclusive in perpetuity or anything like that. But, hey, you might get you a, a, a half a meal, a whole meal, yeah. you know, 2X, whatever that is for a, the first month. And then it goes on to Spotify and all these other things, right? And that'd be interesting because then you'll probably see people develop like these two-tiered mo- rollouts, right? It's like to make that initial launch. And then what is the available everywhere launch look like, right? Yeah. It's but, almost like the the uh, release, I'm trying to think, release strategy. What was it like last year when everyone was doing like the regular albums and the deluxe albums, like a couple yes, of it was exact, yes. That was basically it. That Exactly. Yeah. That type of thing. Because- it, this reminds me of too, you know, how people have been doing this stuff for a while. I was listening to Will Smith's audiobook, which was good as hell. I didn't think it was that good. I was bored at first. And then <laughs> I stopped listening to it for a minute. He did a little slap moment with Chris Rock. Then about three moments later, I say did it with Chris Rock. Like they like, hey, <laughs> like they did it together, right? <laughs> <laughs> here's my hand here's my face um three minutes like three months later so probably like august i started listening to it again and then once i got into a certain period shit got really good um because it started getting you know around his actual music career and stuff yeah and one thing he mentioned was they had this phone line where people would call in yeah. and he was getting I forgot how much it cost for the phone line, but when you did the math, I think it was like five or ten thousand dollars a day that he was making. Maybe it got up to twenty thousand, but it was some ridiculous math of people just calling in, calling in, calling in to talk to him, right? And you know, you bring that into the future. Oh, that's that same type of personal experience. Mm-hmm. Oh, and by the way, when they were calling in, they were calling in just to hear a voicemail, a special voicemail from him. So it's not like he was there talking to everybody. It was like a minute long and they could, some people want to play it back again and mm-hmm. they had longer messages and all that type of stuff. So people are literally calling in just to hear this special voicemail so you can give them an update. It was like social media. They'll be on tour. Hey, yo, I'm out on tour. It's the Fresh Prince. We about to go to this city and the show is live and da, 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 da. Uh, hey, yo, we're in <laughs> Miami now. Jazzy Jeff just hurt his head on the on the, uh, on the the floor or something, da, 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 last show because it was so crazy. Yeah. And giving those updates and they're tuning in just for that, which is like social media almost. It's like a tweet, yeah. an audio yeah. tweet that they're calling in for. So it's like, dang, that's crazy. And they were paying for it. And now we hear like, Oh, well, now we hear about text message marketing, right? Mm -hmm. And now we got social media and staying up up to date. It's like, so all these elements, and when you study far back enough and look at more and more things, it's like they always existed. Yeah. And the value was always there. So sometimes we like to just talk about the game now. This is messed up and da 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 Or this is far more accessible. Overall, things have gotten better, I would say. Like it's hard to argue that things haven't gotten better overall in terms of like opportunity, quality, da, mm-hmm. da, da. but the tech stuff, it's like, yeah, the opp- the the opportunities to do it might have been harder back then. And the game might have flipped where you're focused on one thing or another, but every single era, there's an artist who thrives on one and they struggle with the other. Mm-hmm. So it's like you might have been a good recording studio artist, right? There's some artists these these days who suck at at shows and performing back then you could build an audience off of just putting on like great shows Mm -hmm. and 
that was the thing. And then next thing you know, you level up and get more attention from that or you get opportunities from that just from killing the show. Today, an artist, still, the, the impact is still there, but artists don't get enough credit for their show game, right? Or no, they don't get enough, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Punishment for a bad show game. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just, what's not happening. Just go way under the radar. Way under the radar. They just let it be. It's kind of one of those, it's, it's tolerated. But back then, that shit was not tolerated, right? Yeah. So, you know, there's the, the ebbs and flow. Today, looks... Are I don't, don't want to say they they matter more like they never they never matter, but looks can get you further or like personality can get you further without the music than before. Before you had to lead with music, right? And of course, looks can always elevate you or be a part of the image. But you also had uh, some of those periods, especially especially like Jim Crow or like you know in the more racist times where you go far back enough where they'll have black artists writing and singing, mm-hmm. and then they'll have like white artists lip syncing mm-hmm. <laughs> for, the, for the white audiences so they don't even represent their own music it was on some milli vanilli type shit all right so you literally didn't have to look the par be the par now obviously that was a bad situation that wasn't like hey i don't want to be seen that was like my image or my music is taken from me but the point is there's all the the, the game has different ways to tweak it in every era that benefits or hurts somebody now if you don't like the game or you complain about it now either you're not seeing it correctly and taking advantage of the things that are there or you just chalking it up to the the lottery game and said i was born at the wrong place in the wrong time and you know find another career i guess <laughs> i was one of artists from other Errors ever said that like was an artist in the seventies like man I should have been an artist in like the fifties you know what I'm saying like back when they was bruh <laughs> you know I bet I one hundred percent think because that's like a thing that everybody yeah. does right I wish yeah. I was born ten years prior <laughs> or whatever but you know who would have been lit as fuck today bro James Brown yes but that's not who the hell I'm talking oh, okay, about okay, that was okay. a right. that was a great statement you throwing me <laughs> off with that with the, with the accuracy I wanted to say no but I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking similar enough though. I was thinking Little Richard. Oh yeah, hell yeah, bro, hundred percent. This dude was <laughs> a star, dog. I saw this interview, bro, of him. I, I'm gonna see if I could find it actually. Of him just talking, and I'm like, oh, this dude's a star, dog, bro. Like it was just a quick interview, and the way he talked, that, was, that shit was like, okay. If he was in his era, bro, he just he just have social media followers. He was a legit musician and all that great stuff. But I'm like, oh, he would have a following just off of his his his, his talk. Let me see if I can find that joke real quick. I yeah, feel bro. like I've sent to somebody I know. But Keep that going. that'd be the 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 cool shit. It goes back to the why I think artists have to pay attention to older artists to some degree because you see exactly what you just said, man. How much of this shit that I think was new today mm-hmm. that really is just a variation of some shit they were doing back then. Exactly. And it's just like we talked about in that clip um, about the Travis Scott box. Most of music, a lot of the times, is somebody finds an opportunity and takes advantage of it before somebody else does, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you learn about this opportunity day one and it takes the rest of the industry 90 days to catch on to it. And by the time they catch on to it, you've already capped on it to a massive degree. Yep. And it's becoming normalized and now it doesn't work the same, right? That's it work. like there's there's a batch of artists that always come along and, and that happens for and I even think about times where it probably happened on accident. You know, like we talked about artists like J. Cole and Kendrick coming up during the early YouTube era. I think about now I'm thinking about what I know about YouTube back then and about how a lot of those YouTubers talked about how much the algorithm would just like flood you with attention back then, right? It's like, damn, they just were like Right yep. place, right time. You know what I'm yep. saying with with good music, and, and it kicked off in this thing, or um, or even like Russ with the the SoundCloud stuff. Yep. Like the first time I ever heard about the the song a week strategy, I was like, oh, it's like dropping a piece of content consistently that just keeps triggering the algorithm of a platform. So he just kept hitting the, the SoundCloud algorithm so much yep. that eventually it took off. He probably wasn't thinking of it that way, but that's how that shit hit, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's this this technology or this space that's that hasn't been taken advantage of yet. And everybody does that shit and it doesn't work. It doesn't work the same. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel like that is one of the hardest parts of staying in music is that you are 80% trying to figure out how to build a system within a framework that is already put together 
while spending 20% of your attention trying to like look out to what's going to be next. So you can try to cap yes. on it as soon as it hits. And it's like that, like your eyes literally cross trying to like look at both sides <laughs> of it at the same time and keep up with right, it. That's perfectly said. <laughs> that, because that is the nature of fast moving culture yeah. that music has to present itself within. Like it's cultural based and culture moves so fast within yeah. those trends. And then you got the tech that culture moves on moving as fast as well. So then you triple that, it only increases.